I see the camaraderie, you know, when I see videos and when I saw them in concert, it's just incredible energy, incredible love, you know, for all in the band. And it, it just, it, it's wonderful. It's a wonderful thing to see. And it's not often in bands that you see that either. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a new episode of Set Lessing Bruce, your podcast all about Bruce Springsteen, his music, and mostly his fans. I am your host, Jesse Jackson, and joining me tonight is a new friend. We, uh, I reached out to her via social media, and Kim said, yeah, I'd love to join you. So, Kim Berry, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Jesse. It's a pleasure to be here. I am so excited that we get to talk a little Bruce. Me uh, too. Before we get started, tell us a little about yourself. Give us your elevator pitch. Well, I was uh, born in Milwaukee, and I was raised in a small college town in southeastern Wisconsin, and we had like 800 people in our high school, and we only had one family, one Black family, one Asian family, and, one, and two Mexican families, so there wasn't much diversity. So, um, you know, and I, I believe in... Um, you know, all people bleed red, you know, I yeah. mean, I, I believe that. So I wasn't taught racism, thank God. You know, I, yeah. I, you know, I'm so glad about that. So I was blessed that way. Um, and then I lived in Florida and Georgia also. And, uh, and that's where I started my career as a CNA in mm -hmm. Florida. And I've been doing that ever since. Good. And where is home now? Home is in Kenosha. And I think, you know, I think you've heard about Kenosha lately, so. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, that leads to, how are you doing during this pandemic? Well, I'm doing okay, but my husband's in the hospital now. Um, oh, not no. Not related. Mm -hmm. but, um, due to diabetes, and I hope everybody out there listening will um, realize that diabetes is very important. You know, you need to take care of yourself because unfortunately he had to have amputation. Oh no. Um, right above the knee. After mm. two surgeries, he had to have it right above the knee. Mm. So um, he's gonna be on his way to rehab and hopefully back to his job soon, which he loves to do, so. Yeah, uh, I am a type two diabetic um, oh. as well. Um, you know, I, I've got my little insulin pump on, mm -hmm. you know, that uh, trying to keep myself and uh, my glucose monitor. So, uh, yes. Um, yeah, it is. Um, it's kind of scary to me because I'm yeah. 61. Mm -hmm. I am three years past colon cancer and a type oh. two diabetic. So, mm -hmm. you know, I am in a high risk environment with with COVID. Yes. Um, so we're trying to be as smart and as uh, wise as we can. Uh, well, I wish the best for your husband and uh, I will give good thoughts and prayers for him and uh, for steady healing. And um, I know with you by his side, he's going to do great. Thank you very much. Yeah. So I always like to go back to the beginning. So Kim, talk about, you know, you're growing up there in Wisconsin. You mentioned mm -hmm. it's a small town not a very diverse town, but how about your family? Did they listen to a lot of music? Was it oh, a yeah. house? So talk to me a little bit about that. Well, I remember listening to polka music a lot. Yes. Uh, Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, uh, Herb Albert and Tijuana Brass. You know, my mom, oh, my mom loved Liberace. She was just nuts about Liberace. Mm -hmm. And she saw him like 25 times in concert. So she- Oh, that's great. <laughs> Yeah, she she really was crazy about him. So <laughs> See, it's in your genes, right? Like to being obsessed with a musician, right? Oh, this, yeah. you, can't, you know, it's a family tradition. It sure so, is. That's nice. Um, you know, there is a local. I, I live here in Texas, and there in Denton, Texas, there is a a band called Brave Combo that mm -hmm. does rock and roll polkas. Oh wow! <laughs> They've actually, um, if you Google them, Brave Combo. 
you know, you can listen to some of their music online. They've actually won a couple of Grammys for what best polka album? albums. Yeah. And so um, my son grew up with, uh, you know, dad, it's always a good time to polka. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. You got a smart son there. <laughs> yes, it is. Very nice. Well, how about you when you, you know, it sounds like you embraced your family's music and loved it. How about when you started growing as a teenager into high school? Did you kind of find your own path? Did you... Uh, what kind of music were you listening to then? Well, you know, I was very shy in high school. So when I came home from school, I would just go in my room and I'd listen to all different kinds of music. I mean, anything from um, Led Zeppelin to John Denver. And um, when I started with Bruce, it was the um, the Born to Run album. Okay. And um, Do you remember why you picked up Born to Run? Born to Run, yes. Um, I remember because the song um, 10th Avenue Freeze Out means a lot to me um, because not only did it showcase Clarence Clemens' uh, talent on the saxophone, it also showed me that it was wonderful because Bruce had a black man in his, his band, you know, in, in East Street Band and, mm -hmm. and very talented and, you know, I just, it was wonderful. And it just reminded me of um, a time when I lived in Milwaukee and it was 1968 and um, Bobby Kennedy um, was assassinated that night. Mm -hmm. and there was rioting and then there was a, a civil rights march um, with Father Gra Grappi heading it. And my sister and I were outside, we were playing. I was like, I was nine years old and eight years old, I'm sorry. And um, anyway, um, my mom called us in, you know, we didn't think anything was going on. We just thought there was a parade going on, but you know, I mean, just going back to that album, it just made me think about that time for some reason, you know, okay. I mean, you know, I mean, I hope you can understand what I'm trying to convey. No, here, I do. Yeah. <laughs> you know, one of the questions I always ask is, you know, how did you discover Bruce and what about it spoke to you? And, and a lot of people have a hard time kind of putting it in words, mm -hmm. you know, just the music did speak to him and there's something about his music and that band and that, uh, that band of brothers and now sisters with uh, mm -hmm. Patty and Susie. Um, mm -hmm. So I guess you're kind of feeling that same way, huh? Oh, definitely. Definitely. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I see the camaraderie, you know, when I see videos and when I saw them in concert, it's just incredible energy, incredible love, you know, for all in the band. And it, it just, it, it's wonderful. It's a wonderful thing to see. And it's not often in bands that you see that either. Yeah. So you pick up Born to Run and you're listening to it. You especially love 10th Avenue Freeze Out. Uh, mm -hmm. What was the next step? Did you did you listen to that over and over again? Did you go and buy other yeah. albums? What 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 was the plan? Oh yeah, I listened to it a lot. Yes, and then I bought other albums, like you said. Yeah, The River, Nebraska, mm -hmm. you know, and so on. I mean, just you know, so many albums I like. So many songs. I mean, all a lot of songs that he wrote are just, you know, they make you think about life, and they make you think about love, and they make you think about, you know, just you know, being a, a nice kind human being you know yeah. I mean, uh, just in, in the experiences that he had too growing up and stuff too it just kind of you know it just it, it's really interesting yeah absolutely um so um when you uh i always like to preface this you know kim with you know the amount of times you've seen bruce in concert is not a fair barometer of how big of a fan you are because there's plenty of people that have never seen him there's people that have seen him you know in the you know triple digits mm -hmm. but for the you know for the record how do you do you count how many times you've seen him oh i wish i would have seen him many more times but at least i got to see him so far one time and that was in milwaukee okay and um, march 3rd 2016 the river tour okay and oh my gosh it was not disappointing it was fantastic i mean it was just i mean i was dancing i was rocking i was you know clapping i was oh i was crying i was so happy it was a wonderful wonderful concert just just amazing you know right it's that if you if you have been a fan for a long time and so mm -hmm. about when did you buy born to run about what year 
Oh, the year came out. Okay, so yeah, so you're talking in the 70s. 70s. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so it had been, you I know, still have it. <laughs> yeah. So it's, you know, it's been 25, 30 years and, and, you know, this fandom and you finally get the chance to go see him. Were you a little nervous that he wouldn't live up to the hype? Uh, no, no, I, I, no, I, I didn't even think about that at all. I, I knew it was going to be a fun, exciting, um, interesting, um, just fantastic time. And I was so excited to go and I was so glad I got to go and, and, Oh, I even made a video, you know, after I saw the concert and, you know, I was just so elated and just uh -huh. so happy and I just couldn't get over it. And <laughs> it was just wonderful. What made it so you were finally ready to go see him live? I, I had the opportunity. I mean, I was always okay. working and I couldn't, you know, get off of work and, and, and it just happened that he was going to be there at a night that I could go and I, I've got to go. I, I just got to go. You know, um, living in Texas, right, it's the same thing that um, some of our brothers and sisters that live in the East Coast can get a little spoiled because there's so many more opportunities to see him and oh, yeah. he doesn't always come to our neck of the woods uh, all the time. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Did, um, what did you think of Letter to You? Oh my gosh, I love it. I just love it. I, I, I feel that, you know, he's singing to all of us, uh, us fans, his family, his friends, the band, everybody. And it's just a wonderful, wonderful, heart touching song. I, I just, every time I hear it, I just like, I want to cry. Yeah. But, but the thing of it is, um, you know, I mean, he's been making this music for 50 years now, and it, it's sad what's going on right now in, in our country. You know, I mean, it, it's just, you know, what has really changed, you know, since he started the music and in between, in the middle, you know, and now, you know, I mean, hope to God that things get better, you know. Yeah, it is. Um, this has been a really you know, 2020 was a pretty crappy year yeah. and, and uh, not to get too political, you know, yeah. this administration has done a lot of things that I don't agree with. Mm -hmm. um, and it has been a really rough year, rough four years. Mm -hmm. um, and um, you do hope, you do hope that things are gonna get better, that oh, yes. there is uh, better days ahead mm -hmm. to uh, quote Bruce, right? These are better days. Yeah. <laughs> yes, indeed. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, you talked about um, when you got to see him, was there something that stood out? You know, it's the river. So you're getting the river in full. Uh, mm -hmm. Then he did another kind of mini set afterwards. Is there anything that kind of stood out that really was a highlight to you? Well, his, his energy. Okay. I mean, it's, it's just mind-blowing it's just incredible how much energy he has and and he still has i'm sure he's you know when he starts touring again he's still going to have that energy because he really does take good care of himself yeah he really and, does and, and 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 you know you can just feel the power you know you feel it from the stage and i was way up you know high and i could still you know i was i felt like i was on stage with him like you know i mean or closer to him you know i mean it was just it was just like he was singing to me are there any specific songs that meant a lot to you, Kim? Oh, a lot of them, yes. Um, uh, uh, She's the One, um, Th Thunder Road. Uh, I don't know if you're asking me. Oh, man, so many. I mean, just... Sure. Uh, um, oh, the one that um, he sings with Patty. Mm -hmm. tougher than the rest yeah oh, when they when they do that song together oh it's just it's just phenomenal it's just like you can see the chemistry you can feel the energy between them it's yeah you can tell the you know it, it appears you know they have been good companions for each other for this definitely. you know as he says for this part of the ride right and oh, that's there are good so definitely there's so mates. yeah absolutely yeah um i didn't know if there was specifically like i'm sure when you're there at the show hearing out in the streets live or, or i'm sorry hearing 10th avenue freeze out live you must have just lost it <laughs> oh yeah i was just going nuts i you know i mean 
<laughs> I was by myself and I just, I didn't care. You know I mean? I just yeah. danced and clapped and I just was going, oh, wow. Yeah. That's awesome. That's very good. Um, do you, um, I know you're very active on social media. Um, are, have you, have you kind of got a connection of Bruce buddies that you interact with uh, via, you know, Twitter or other social media? Yeah, some. And in fact, uh, it's, it's cool that you brought that up because last night I talked to my sister. She lives in New Jersey. Okay. And, um, you know, we didn't really, we weren't really that close when we were younger, but now we've grown closer as, you know, time has gone on. And she mentioned the fact that uh, she was a big Bruce Springsteen fan too. And I didn't realize that at the time, you know, when oh, we were funny. Going. And she actually got to meet Bruce. Oh, really? In New Jersey. In New oh. Jersey. oh, tell that story. Okay. Yeah. Um, she was dating some, she was on a first date with somebody and they were walking on in Ashbury Park, you know, on, on the boardwalk. And she said that, she saw, you know, Bruce standing there talking to other people. And then she just like, you know, she thought, well, I don't want to be crazy, you know, you know, going nuts or anything like that. So she just nodded at him. And then, you know, she walked by him and then he kind of like ran up to catch up to them, you know, and then he said, you know, how you doing and everything like that. And she said, he was so gracious, you know, and he was so down to earth. And he walked with them the rest of the way until they got to his motorcycle. And then he took off and then they took off. So, you know, she really was uh, amazed at how well, you know, how, how nice he was and, and so gracious and, you know, polite. And, you know, so I, I probably would have went nuts. I'm sorry, but I would have probably not been able to control myself. <laughs> but who knows? Maybe I would. I don't know. But, but I, you know, I, I was like, wow, you got to meet him. That was so cool. So. That's very cool. That's very cool. Um, did you did you buy the autobiography? No, I haven't gotten it yet. I I, okay. I will. I'm going to I'm going to get it even on Kindle or something. I'm going to get it. Yeah, it it really is. A, you know, you talk about some of the struggles he had as a young man. Um, he does a good job of articulating that, kind of explaining it. So mm -hmm. I think you'll enjoy it. I think you'll enjoy it a lot. Um, mm -hmm. Are there uh, are there songs like on Western stars or letter to you, those two albums that kind of speak to you that you feel an attachment to? Oh, I, I love Western stars. I, I love that, uh, sundown. Um, mm -hmm. and, um, oh, I can't remember some of the other ones right now, but, but I just love that album. I mean, I was amazed. I thought, Oh, he's coming out with a Western album. Hmm. Yeah. So then I sat down and I listened to it and it's like, wow, you know, this is pretty cool. Yeah, you know, exactly. He, you know, I mean, he just doesn't do rock and roll. He does Western and, and it's just phenomenal. It's, it's, it's amazing how that turned out. And I love the videos and, you know, all the songs and it's just, it's, I love the orchestra in the background. I mean, that was an, that was an extra special thing for him to do that. I mean, it just adds to the songs so perfectly. Yeah, I agree. It was really a treat. And to see the film, to hear him talk about the different songs and everything mm -hmm. is pretty amazing. Um, so when he tours again, Kim, and you get another chance to see him, do you have a couple of songs that you really hope that he's going to play live? Letter to You and Ghosts and uh, some songs from Western Stars. About yeah. To see them. yeah yeah that would be great i would love to hear the e street band do some versions of some of the western star songs mm -hmm. and yeah i i am eagerly looking forward to hearing you know them perform you know power of prayer if i was a priest you know um i'll, I'll see you in my dreams you know all mm -hmm. live would just be absolutely absolutely lovely and yeah. I'm definitely gonna go. <laughs> yeah, I definitely, I definitely am gonna go see him again. Darn yeah. right. <laughs> now, uh, are now you said your sister's a fan. How about anyone else in the family? Are you alone? Is your is your loving husband just put up with your passion, or is he a fan too? Oh, my husband likes Bruce. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. I and you know he uh, he surprises me sometimes because in his truck he puts on E Street Radio. 
and not even ask him. And then it's like, oh, okay, cool. You know, we're rocking the Bruce when we're driving around. That's all right. <laughs> nice. That's a good spouse. That's a good guy. Yeah. That's nice. That's very cool. Good, good. Very nice. Well, um, you know, Kim, what have I not asked you that I should have asked? Um, hmm. Is there, you mentioned the power of out in the street. I mean, I'm sorry, 10th Avenue Freeze Out, where, you know, in the, in the diversity of the band, um, you know, is there other songs that have gotten you through a rough time in your life or that you use when you're especially in a mood to celebrate maybe that you you play it and you you bring out the dancing I, I well I really like the rising you know I mean especially what, what's happened you know lately yeah I love the song and um hopes and hope and dreams yeah I like that one. that's that's really powerful um you know songs like that I mean just you know really help you know everyday life and you know you're playing that and you're thinking about that and you know it helps you get stronger you know i yeah. mean it's just the words and and you know you think about those things and it's like yeah you know this is going to happen or we're going to do this or it's going to get better you know there are going to be better days and yeah so his his music does is a companion and it does add a lot of strength and and support to I think all of us as fans. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's a poet. He, I mean, yeah. he's a poet, and he's a he's a, 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 a you know a, a soother you know to the soul. Yeah. I mean, he's just he's he's amazing man. He's just amazing. Mm -hmm. Good. And the band has been phenomenal too. I mean, you know, him and the band are just you know a rare combination, and they're they're wonderful together. Yeah, that is, there is something special about them. The the sum of the parts equals more than mm -hmm. them individually. There is something magic about them when they get together. Mm, definitely, definitely. And, and I think that's one of the reasons why I love her to let her to you so much, is that here is someone that's been playing together, you know, over 40, 50 years, mm -hmm. right? And that they're together and they know each other and they're able to communicate that that love and friendship between each other. Oh, and you can see it too in the video. It's just, you know, I mean, it's, yeah. it's so cool to see that. It really is. And, you know, when, and, and, you know, when you have Jake, who's there, you know, oh. kind of in Clarence's spirit and doing things, mm -hmm. um, there really is a, there is a, you see that family of the band. Definitely. That's just pretty amazing. Absolutely. I mean, Jake is, is phenomenal. I mean, he, he's, he's like Clarence Clemens the second. I mean, he's just like, you know wow you know mm -hmm. he's wow <laughs> yeah so i always like to ask this on the show and it's kind of become my trademark but um jay armstrong is an honors english teacher in the philadelphia area he's just recently retired and they always spend two days in during his honors english class breaking down thunder road looking at all the lyrics talking about the imagery uh, the the phrases Bruce use, uh, they compare to Robert Robert Frost, the road not taken, and um, and at the end of the two days, you know Jay asks his class, "Does Mary get in the car?" So Kim, that's your question. Does Mary get in the car at the end of Thunder Road? Uh, if it was me, yeah, yeah, I would, I would, I'd, I'd take a chance, I'd go for it. And I do think it is a chance, right? I mean, you know, that, uh, as he says, we've got one more chance to make it real. Right. Um, and you're gambling. You are deciding, you know, you are you are choosing a future mm -hmm. and uh, going forward. So, yeah, I like that answer. I like that answer a lot. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Any final thoughts you want to share with us? No, I just, uh, I just hope everything um, gets better in our country and um, that... Soon we'll be seeing Bruce and E Street Band in concert live, um, you know, and I'm looking forward to that. Um, and I just hope that, you know, we can get rid of COVID and everybody can start living back, you know, back to normal. And 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 I hope that my husband is going to be okay and, and he heals and, you know, and he can go back and doing doing the things that he likes to do. And I hope that I can go back to work too soon. And. Mm -hmm. And I just wish everybody peace and love out there and, and, and uh, 
thank you so much to Bruce and the E Street Band, and I'm always a fan, and I always will be, and I can't wait to see them again in concert. I think you said it perfectly, and uh, <laughs> I think we're all praying for, um, you know, the healing. Um, I know that this nation is very divided right now, and there is a lot of people hurting. There is a lot of hate out there, and, uh, you know, we're, we're all going to have to work together to try to heal and to yeah. do the best we can, and uh, I'm excited Wednesday night. Bruce is performing, yes, you know, yes. to celebrate. So I'm looking forward to that. Oh, yes. And, um, you know, and I do think that, um, you know, we are on our path to a kinder and gentler and more fair America. And I think that's what we need. Yes. Yes, we do. We all need that. We yeah. all need hope. We, we all need more love. We all, we need more, more peace, understanding and unity. Yeah, we do. We truly are working toward that land of hope and dreams together. Indeed, and more Bruce songs. <laughs> Absolutely. With uh, Bruce always makes it better. Uh, thank you, Kim. This was just lovely. I, you, I love meeting you. I love you sharing your stories. And I think I am thinking good thoughts and praying for you and your husband. What's your husband's name? Dwayne. Dwayne? Dwayne. Mm -hmm. Dwayne. All right. Well, we will, we will all be sending thoughts and good wishes for him. Please keep me posted on how they're doing. And you. Uh, you are, you're my Springsteen sibling. And that yeah, means I, I care about you, right? Oh, thank you. Listeners, I want you to take care of yourself. I want you to remember there's a lot of us out there hurting. There are neighbors and friends and family that need your support, that need your love, and we all need to be kind to each other. Uh, remember to wash your hands. Remember to social distance. Remember to wear an effing mask. Um, this thing is not going away till we all do our part to take care of it, and uh, you need to do your part. But for now, be good to each other. Take care, and we will talk to you soon. Goodbye. Doing a podcast at times can be a one-way conversation, and I hate that. So please let me know what you like and don't like about the work I'm doing. You can reach the podcast via email at setlustingbruce at gmail.com. The show is on Twitter, at setlustingbruce, and my personal Twitter is at jessejacksondfw. We have a website, www.setlessingbruce.com. From there, you can find links to other Springsteen podcasts, as well as other music-themed podcasts. We have a page devoted to our own SLB All-Star Band. These are guests who have been on the podcast more than three times. There is a link to our store where you can purchase Set Lessing Bruce shirts, as well as a Mary Question t-shirt. There is a link to our Patreon page where you can sign up to help support the podcast financially. We have different levels and different rewards based on your support. If you don't have any extra cash, and right now who does, you can support the podcast by subscribing via your favorite podcast player and leaving us a review. The more reviews we have, the easier it is for people to find us. And please tell a friend about the podcast, especially if they love Bruce or music, because it will make a difference. You just heard the fun talking, hard rocking, music loving, album ranking, fan thinking, joy spreading, lyric reading, story sharing podcast that is the one, the only, that listening Bruce. Set Listening Bruce is part of the Southgate Media Podcast Group. The theme for Set Listening Bruce was written by David Rosen, used by permission.